with Kayla and Jim and welcome back to another Meteorology Monday. This week we're going to talk about a subject that we started last week and yep. we got a lot of responses to. Thank you guys for all the responses. We are following up to the Pilger, Nebraska tornado and specifically yep. is it the fastest forward moving tornado on record? Is it the fastest forward moving tornado? I know last week we had said that the fastest moving tornado was the tri-state tornado back in 1925 with a forward moving three speed. Three states. Sorry. <laughs> three states. <laughs> with a forward moving speed of 73 miles per hour. However, we have gotten many comments since then talking about the Pilger, Nebraska tornado of June 16th, 2014. We've done some research. We saw some really good videos put together from yep. some of the leading scientists out there. We wanted to share that with you, share our thoughts on it yep. as well, give you our opinion, and engage more discussion on this. Exactly. A little precursor if you guys didn't see last week's video or the video from Pecos Hank that we will be referencing a lot in this video about the fastest moving tornado. Probably check those out first. They will be linked down below and then come back to this when you're done. So there's debate between the tri-state tornado being the fastest forward moving tornado or the Pilger, Nebraska tornado being the fastest moving tornado. Right now we have tri-state at 73 miles an hour, Pilger at 94 plus or minus miles an hour. Is Pilger actually faster than the tri-state tornado? The answer is yes and no. And here's why. <laughs> so how the fastest moving tornado forward speed was classified was usually it's a single event, single storm with one tornado. It has its typical structure. We're not talking about vortices or satellites or anything like that. And it kind of started the classification of just this single entity moving along in whatever straight line it was going and calculate the speed, distance over time, right? But as research has discovered over you know past 10, 20 years, it's not always the case. So it kind of gets a little complicated when you say the fastest forward moving storm. Yeah. Well, the little asterisk next to that is, is, is there any influences? Is it part of the existing tornado storm, mesocyclone, all this stuff? And that's what we're going to discuss today, yep. specifically about the Pilgrim, Nebraska tornado. Did it have any influences to cause it to have that speed? Was it on its own motion that allowed it to do that? What's happening? So in the video, I'm assuming by this point, everybody has watched the video. It was discussed, is this a satellite tornado? Is this the Pilger tornado? You had the East Pilger tornado, you had the Wakefield tornado, all of these EF4s, very strong mesocyclones. Were they influencing each other? Were they satellite tornadoes? Were they their own thing? Let's get to that first. I'm gonna preface this by saying also that there's not a lot of research when it comes to these types of tornadoes. I believe there's only a couple instances where we've had, you know, storm chasers here and here and here and here and everybody's got a video camera or a radar and we're getting all this data around one specific tornado. There's not very many times where this has happened and you get all of these data points and you can kind of put everything together. Side note, props to all of the work those guys did absolutely incredible to be able to take all these different angles and piece them together and oh the lightning bolt is happening right here so we sync it up with this and we can tell the distance because we had GPS and we know that he was here and, and she was here and they were there and 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 mind-blowing absolutely <laughs> incredible yeah that's off to you guys keep doing what you're doing this is yeah, what's definitely. advancing the science and we're discovering more and more things in 10 20 years this might be the stepping stone to discovering something else all right before we go forward though we should probably give some definitions as to what a sub vortex tornado or sub vortices are what a satellite tornado is how it differs from regular tornadoes and I have some cleverly drawn little <laughs> pictures here that I will pop up on the screen as you can tell I'm an artist. So we've got our satellite tornado and for, for every tornado, you have the overarching storm that we call a supercell. It's a rotating storm. In that we have a mesocyclone. This is your main rotation. It's the part of the storm that makes a thunderstorm a supercell. So we have the supercell, and in that we have the mesocyclone, and then underneath that, we get what's called wall clouds. And these are the really tightly spinning things that drop funnels. With a satellite tornado, you have your supercell, your mesocyclone, your wall cloud, and then you have underneath that a tornado, 
And then you can also have a separate wall cloud and tornado. So you kind of have the main circulation, that's the bigger one. And then off to the side, you kind of have this little tornado that's not as well defined. Sometimes it's defined, but not as well defined usually. And it kind of goes around the main one. So it's a tiny little one and it kind of orbits satellite see what we're doing there it kind of orbits around that main tornado now the difference between a satellite and sub vortices for sub vortices we have the supercell we have the mesocyclone we have the wall cloud we have the tornado and then in the tornado itself we have tiny little spin-ups so kind of like mini tornadoes within the tornado so it's not its own separate thing it's kind of like stacked there's wall cloud tornado little tornadoes and those are sub vortices so what you're saying is is satellite tornadoes is kind of like a, a separate tornado but part of the main storm Correct. the single storm supercell Correct. right and so but the the vortices they're actually part of the actual tornado yes that's connected to the yes. wall cloud nozzle cyclone main supercell yep so leads us to the ultimate question was the pilger nebraska tornado satellite tornado, its own tornado, some sort of hybrid, was it influenced, what What was it? What's happening? Going off of what they said in the video and all the footage that they put together and all the research that they did, we can clearly see that there were two twin tornadoes going into Pilger. You had the Pilger tornado, you had the East Pilger tornado. The East one died off, we're just left with the Pilger tornado. Now, while this is kind of in its dying stage, kind of getting rain wrapped, you know how tornadoes do, kind of getting absorbed by the main supercell there, we have another supercell out in front of it developing what would later become the Wakefield tornado, another very strong EF4 tornado. And as you can see in some of the video angles, you see the kind of roping out Pilger tornado come out of the rain, kind of gain strength again, and then it passes very, very, very closely behind the Wakefield tornado and then quickly dies off after that. Now, during that time, for 5.33 seconds, they recorded and figured out that this Pilger tornado went 94.6 miles per hour in the forward direction, which is a mind-blowingly fast track for a tornado, with the record previously being 73 miles per hour and the average being like, you know, 30, 40, 50 is great. 94.6 miles per hour. But at this point, what made it go from 50, 60 miles an hour all the way up to 90 and then quickly die out. Looking earlier in the video, I happened to notice them talking about it was going along at about 20 to 30 miles an hour, increased somewhere in the 30 to 40 mile an hour range, and yeah. then it got to a point where it started going at 62. Now, it, I think it was post-mature at that point. It started phasing toward the end of its life cycle, but it started as it got closer to the Wakefield tornado, it started accelerating. Okay, 62, been there before, seen that happen. But then as it continued to dwindle down and focus more of its energy, it seemed like the influence of the Wakefield tornado started yeah. taking over. It just happened to be in the right spot at the, the right, right time, time and it caused a rapid acceleration and a sustained wind speed of 94 miles an hour for five seconds or so and then rapidly dropped off. So looking at it from scientific storm structure, if the Wakefield tornado wasn't there, would the tornado have accelerated like right. that? And let me just put something in there real quick. It wasn't the Wakefield tornado itself that made the Pilger one speed up. It was the RFD or the rear flanking downdraft which is basically these really, really strong winds on the backside of the storm that hit the ground at 100 miles an hour and spread out, and that's where you can get straight line winds or downbursts. So with the Wakefield tornado and the Pilger one passing behind it, it was in that zone of rear flanking downdraft where you, know, you get these extraordinary speeds. Exactly, and so it just could have been simply the timing of where the Pilger tornado was, and then when the RFD from the Wakefield tornado happened to come into play, influence the Pilger tornado, yep. influence its forward speed, yep. and trajectory. Because as they yep. show, it still continued to move on a path that would resemble, you know, an RFD kind of thing, depending yep. on where it is in the RFD. A lot of interesting components a lot of coming components into here. play here. Yeah. Which, now we go back to the question, was the Pilger tornado the fastest 
forward moving tornado? The answer is... I, I think it deserves its own category, to be honest. That's right. Because That's right. is it the fastest moving tornado? Yes. Was it the fastest moving tornado by itself? Would it have been going 90 something miles an hour if the Wakefield tornado hadn't been there? Most likely, no. The thing was dying, it was roping out. I have a hard time believing that out of nowhere it would just speed up, especially because the parent supercell was not going 90 something miles an hour. Right. Can you put this in the same category as the Tri-State tornado? Right. Where it was just one tornado and one supercell, one mesocyclone, there was no other influence. I don't think that you can replace the Tri-State tornado with the Pilger tornado. But that being said, I do think that the Pilger tornado needs to be recognized as the incredible fast moving tornado that it was. Yeah, absolutely. And yes, technically it is the fastest forward moving tornado yes. on record with the little asterisk that it was influenced to get it to yes. that speed. And that begs the question now from a scientific perspective going forward, do we keep the same classification I think we and need to mindset? Change, yeah, change some definitions here. Or do here. we need to yeah, update some definitions? <laughs> and say, you know, okay, fastest forward moving storm that is under its own power, one that had influence from another storm, one that's a satellite tornado, you know, so there's some yeah. other, other things there that have yeah. to be considered Definitely. in order to give it a classification. Yeah. So we know that a single tornado moving by itself is kind of its own category. Pilger here, it's its own thing, but it's influenced by another mesocyclone, so it's not a satellite, but it has a lot of characteristics of a satellite, but it's definitely its own thing. We have satellites where it's definitely part of the same mesocyclone as a parent tornado. We have subvortices, and we know from other events that this other category of subvortices and actual satellites and maybe tropical tornadoes, ones influenced by hurricanes and created by hurricanes, do have a tendency to reach fast speeds too. So let me name off some of those real quick. Also discussed in the video linked below, we have the El Reno, Oklahoma tornado, the big one in 2013, and they had measured two of the subvortice tornadoes reaching up to 175 miles per hour in the forward direction. So it is possible for these influenced tornadoes or tornadoes that are part of other tornadoes to reach speeds like this. It's not unheard of, it's not uncommon. Another one being in the May 3rd tornado in 99. You had subvortices going around 112 miles per hour. So this is becoming increasingly apparent that it happens quite often that you get these, these influenced tornadoes or satellites or subvortices whipping around or being thrown by other storms at, at these incredible speeds. You've also got hurricanes. I mean, you have a Cat 5 and you put down a tornado and the winds of the Cat 5 are going <laughs> 175 miles an hour. You're going to have these tropical tornadoes being, you know, thrown across at incredible speeds like that as well. So it, it's not unheard of for these to be so big. The thing with the Pilger tornado is if it is its own circulation and its own tornado, could it replace the Tri-State tornado? Yeah, and how many times have we observed a storm dying, another one forming very close, the RFD from the from the new storm influencing the old storm? Yeah, I think yeah. this gives not only evidence of something that, wow, okay, we need to research this more, but it might explain some other video that was taken in years yeah. past to go, hey, that explains that because yeah. it looks like that was a similar thing. Yeah, I think we need a, we need a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of researchers <laughs> and we need to sit down and be scientific about this and figure out you know in past events if this has ever happened before and definitely be on the lookout to see if this happens in the future but going forward I think this is a great and amazing stepping stone for tornado research and just seeing what comes of future influence circulations like this the door is wide open for this kind of research and, yeah and everyone's comments and discussions and you know this is this is how we take advances in science is yep. We discover something, we have it open for discussion, we have folks with many different disciplines and backgrounds coming together and trying to figure this out, and if it happened once, it could probably happen again, so... It's probably already happened. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, 
just all coming together as a, a meteorological community and even if you're not a meteorologist you know your voice is just as valued because you're providing input with your observation as exactly. well exactly a lot of people with the the cell phone footage or camera yeah. footage, something like, they're not meteorologists anybody but, with a camera can be part of this that's, I, that, right. that's the beauty of storm chasing and tornado research is it's so heavily relies on anybody with a camera i mean you don't even have to know what you're seeing as long as your camera is pointing at it and you can help with amazing discoveries like this that's right absolutely that's part of what this channel is about is, yeah is, a, is a, a community of people just coming together and we just talk about these things and we learn we grow together and you know share knowledge and this is awesome so awesome. we look forward to uh, you know all the comments watch the video again from uh, last week if you've got more comments, suggestions, stuff like that, comment again. Yeah. Put your comments here for this video. Discussion and let us is know. wide open. This isn't this isn't just a video that's out there. This is a an ongoing discussion. You know, here are our thoughts on the video. Here are their thoughts when they made the video. We talked about stuff last week. We hear you guys in the comments. Keep the discussion going. Let's advance the tornado research. You that's know, right. Here on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it with that. Again, looking back at the tri-state tornado and comparing with Pilger. Right now, Tri-State is officially on the books as 73. We've got new research, we got new things going on here. Weather Service hasn't officially declared Pilger as Great. the as the fastest forward moving, but that doesn't mean it won't. It just means that we're now under research to see what's yep. going on here. And who knows, within the next period of time here, they may classify that. Exactly, still up in the air at this point. That's right. So as of right now, Officially, it's still tri-state, but we do recognize, you know, Pilger did outpace it, especially since it had that influence. So do we still keep tri-state as its own category, single fastest moving tornado with no influences? And then Pilger would be another category, fastest moving tornado with influences. Talk about it in the discussion, guys. Think? What do you guys think? Should, Should we have be... different classifications? Yeah. You know, or, or do we just have everything lumped under one classification? Yeah. This is a great forum to go ahead and, and start that discussion. Exactly. With that being said, if you guys liked what you saw today, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe down below so you never miss another Meteorology Monday. If you have friends and family who are also interested in this kind of thing and have seen the uh, the Pecos Hank video and are interested, definitely share this with them as well. We'd love to get as many people as we can discussing this because, you know, we're all still learning here together. It's not, this is right and this is wrong and, no, man, we're in a science field. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Everything is based on discussion. Always learning, always discovering and yeah. you know, seeing what's out there. That's, exactly. That's the exciting part about it. If you want to follow more of our weather adventures, be sure to check us out on Instagram and Facebook. And we also have a website with a bunch of blogs and informational things along the lines of the topics that we discussed today. Link down below. Until next time, I'm Kayla. And I'm Jim. Thanks for watching. And may you categorize your tornadoes properly. <laughs>